So let's talk about the um, type of situation you would be in if you had a two substrate reaction. Here, we need to figure out, or there is some information to be found about the order in which substrates bind and then release to make a product. So for example, when two or more reactants are involved, when there are two or more substrates, we can use enzyme kinetics to distinguish between what type of mechanism they are um, undergoing. The two main types of mechanisms that we usually see is a sequential mechanism, meaning substrate one binds and then substrate two binds or a ping pong mechanism in which you're going between the two. Here's a visualization of that. Um, you can have, again, ordered reactions like this, where you have enzyme binding to substrate one, forming a complex, and then substrate two comes in and binds onto that complex, making substrate one, two, and enzyme all together and then finally forming its product. This is an example of a sequential mechanism. Now the order of this can be mixed up as well, but again, it is sequential in the way that it is binding. You can see an example of a ping pong type of uh, enzyme binding in which Instead, you have an enzyme and some substrate that forms a complex with another set of enzyme and substrates. And essentially, these are just rearranging with each other. And as they ping pong, go back and forth, between being bound and unbound and utilizing different enzymes, products are then released. Now, how do we distinguish types of um, substrate binding utilizing this type of plot? Here is an example of a lineweaver burke plot or again, a linear lot, linearized double reciprocal plot. Here, instead of the units for X and Y being X equals concentration of substrate and Y equals the velocity or the rate, here we have X being one over the concentration of substrate and Y being one over the velocity or the rate. So this is where the reciprocal word comes from because we're just taking the X and Y axes and taking the reciprocal, making them one over what they were. These gener generate a linear line when you take the reciprocal. Here, you can gain the same type of information that we found from our um, normal plot, our normal michaelis benton plot, um, but it is found in different areas. So again, you can easily kind of see where Vmax is by calculating, by looking at where our plot plateaued in our other type of plot. On a line weaver burke plot, the Vmax can be calculated at the y-intercept. The y-intercept is equal to one over the Vmax. So if you find the y-intercept on this plot, you can then calculate your Vmax for your enzyme. The Km can also be calculated from this plot in a different way, and it is where the x-intercept is. So again, where their linear line hits the x-intercept. This is negative one over km. 
So if you find the x-intercept, if x equals negative one over km, you can then rearrange to solve for just your km. Now the whole slope of this line also is utilizing the two parameters. The slope is km over vmax. So you could also calculate the slope and find information that way as well. The reason we use the line weaver burke plot when looking at things like a sequential mechanism or an inhibitor mechanism is because it's easy to see how the changing of a linear line up and down relates to a type of mechanism. And these can be much more easily distinguished with this type of plot versus our other plot. In a sequential mechanism, when you have sequential binding of our um, enzyme to substrate. So again, that is something like enzyme plus substrate one. And then you add substrate two and you form another um, temporary complex. And then finally you make your products. So again, our sequential type of binding when you have more than one substrate can be distinguished from this plot. And the way that you can distinguish it is because as you increase the second substrate. So here we have the x-axis is concentration of substrate, but it's substrate number one. So as our x-axis changes, that is concentration of substrate one. Each line is where we held the substrate two, whatever our second substrate is, at a constant level. So for example, this might be substrate one is obviously increase, increasing on our x-axis and substrate two was going from a concentration of one to two to three to four, let's say millimolar. So each line again, each line is showing where we have a concentration of our second substrate changing. So for that whole line, we're recording change in substrate one, as substrate two is held at one concentration. And then you do that multiple times. What you can see is this pattern in which as you increase substrate two concentration, whatever the second substrate is, you will see that the slope of your line is going to change in which you have this decrease going from a lower to a higher concentration of substrate two. Now, another thing to note is where all of the lines intersect this point right here. For a sequential mechanism, these will all intersect on this side of a plot, on this side of the x-axis, so in the negative x-axis region instead of the positive x-axis region. So again, this is where our y-axis is. This is where our x-axis is. If it's shifted to that negative region, this intersection, that also tells you that is a sequential mechanism. So these are two things you're looking for. As concentration increases, you'll see that slope is going to change, going downward. And we'll see that where all the lines intersect is in the negative X region. If you have a ping pong mechanism, essentially what we show is that 
the concentration of substrate two is not related in a manner that concentration of substrate two is related in a sequential mechanism. So ping pong mechanism, they don't have the same relationship. They're not related in the same way. They're not interrelated to each other where they're dependent on each other's binding. And so for a ping pong kinetic mechanism, what you'll see is that the lines are parallel. So there is no intersection point as we showed here. And instead they are parallel to each other. Similarly though, as you increase the concentration of substrate two, you see the slope changing in a way in which the lines decrease down. So that part is held the same, but we have parallel lines instead. So just by visualization, you can determine a ping pong mechanism versus a sequential mechanism using this line weaver Burke. And again, you can always also calculate the KM and the VMAX for each of these circumstances based on the plot.